Catching this right, this person saw your OKQ pro Cupid profile and tried to tell you that his heavy labor breathing upon seeing your pictures was because it was healthier for him to do that. That's a good point, actually. Did, did he call you to demonstrate? <laughs> about the healthy benefits of drool? <laughs> I feel like Darth Vader would be the healthiest person ever. <laughs> the dark side is the way to go, is what you're saying. Uh, Alright. Yes, we need dark water. Dark, dark water. Alright, uh, uh, about the, the slap ball, what was it called again? Enviro Slaptic. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> Some more critical questions about this. Yeah. <laughs> Enviro Slaptic. Uh, yes, do you, when you slap the to you know to uh, fix the energy of the person, does it have to be in the face or can it be in other no, locations? Could it, could it be the butt? <laughs> <laughs> Combining the two together. Yes, absolutely. Do you have problems with your butt, sir? <laughs> You can't come see me after the panel. <laughs> Did Amy just pick someone up? <laughs> Do That's how it's done, Bree. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I well, I'll go here and then... Uh, okay. We're just kind of thinking of this whole pickup thing is happening here with... Going around asking someone to take a picture of your butt. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it's an excellent way to meet people. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a series that we're going to start next week on Sketch Show. <laughs> Maybe we can wrap this into our butt snaps thing that we've got going. So can we add in quantum butts? Quantum butts? <laughs> is your butt is not a butt? I feel like Sir Mix-a-Lot should be on this panel. <laughs> Yeah. And I was just going to say, if the head is up your butt, then you do both the same thing. There you go. Uh, it's all fitting together. Yeah. <laughs> Back around. Yes. Uh, so, would the light water be more or less effective at dissolving chemtrails? If anyone couldn't hear it, he's asking if light water is better for dissolving chemtrails. <laughs> No. <laughs> <laughs> Let me briefly, for people who aren't aware, chemtrails are, uh, people see contrails in the sky, that's the water va vapor that uh, planes at high altitude often leave, and they uh, believe that those contrails are sometimes lasting too long, which is what happens when there's no wind around to break it up, things like that. Uh, but they believe that they're lasting because they're actually made of chemicals that the government is spraying on people to... And like, the reasons why vary, but like, you know, it's like mind control, or sterilization, or like getting you to vote for Obama. <laughs> <laughs> it can actually be avoided if you serve biodynamic wine on the plane. <laughs> <laughs> okay, there you go. Um, yes, and the very back. Could you do a before and after rumpological analysis after <laughs> applying enviroslaptic to the affected area? It depends on how drunk we get. <laughs> I'll tell you what, come to the skeptic party room 227 tonight. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. Yeah. Uh, I think I saw another hand over this way. Yes. So I wanted to know the connection between Kangen water and light water. Kagan water? Kagan water. Kangen water. Yes. I don't even know what Kagan water is. <laughs> Honey, that's just sweat because you're doing it too hard. <laughs> is, this, is this water high and you buy a machine and the machine ionizes your water and um. makes it alkaline or, acid or acidic and it like hydrates your water? It's because your, your stomach. 
like is too acidic. <laughs> Duh. That's kind of how it works. <laughs> well, actually, you know, normal people say you know water is neutral, um, but most water that's been sitting around is actually slightly acidic. The CO2 is dissolved in the water, which out, and so it's carbonic acid. So it's slightly acidic already. So you already have this machine in your home. <laughs> exchanges, something that's an acid, will lose a proton and gain a deuterium. But there isn't that much deuterium in the earth to begin with. So you already contain some. You can, if you wanted to extrapolate it out, you contain 0 0.0156. So that's how much you have. So if you're drinking light water, which is actually doesn't have deuterium in it, it can't get rid of the deuterium you have so I'm not sure how it would make you lighter. <laughs> oh, wait, uh, is there helium in it? <laughs> no word on that, because there isn't actually, you know, because it's water. <laughs> I don't understand backup. <laughs> so it's water. Uh, uh, serious question. When you breathe in helium, talk funny. Do you get a little bit lighter? No. <laughs> Do you? <laughs> no. The answer to everything today is going to be no. <laughs> I was going to say the answer is quantum. What? Oh, quantum. I'm not a kid or I would have drank. Quantum is our new drinking game word. <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, right there in the back. I wanted to know if the light water was That's sold by nice. weight or by volume. You <laughs> <laughs> asked me if the light water is sold by weight or volume. Uh, that's a very good question, right? Do you know? Oh, it's uh, mass percent. <laughs> weight by volume. <laughs> Say right, like it makes me so happy to know that you know the percentage of, of various chemicals in the earth. Like, did you study up for this item, or do you just know like what percentage everything is? I just know in chemical makeup. Yeah. 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 I love it. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is just, you guys. Maybe you don't understand how serious this is. <laughs> we really need to work out what is the worst pseudoscience of all time, and we can't do that until all the questions are answered. <laughs> so, uh, we've got one here. Uh, in regards to biodynamic alcohol, is there anything I can put in my homebrew to prevent hangover? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. What you can actually do is eliminate the middleman. If your body has the proper yeast in it, you can actually brew right in your body. <laughs> <laughs> so without actually purchasing the beer, you can then eat sugar and become drunk and then hungover right in the same time. <laughs> this has actually happened to many people. Um, the biodynamic community in my... Uh, from what I hear from my sources, they frown on that practice because, like, the... Uh, the um, energy and the cosmic, you know, surroundings of being in your car and just, you know, brewing in your body from looking for the UV or something is just really, you know, they, that's not something that anybody would spend. <laughs> so I do want to more chemistry. Hangover is a collection of ailments because you drink too much. There's no way you can cure it. There are just ways you can treat the pain you feel after having made really good friends with Jimmy Johnny Jack and my personal favorite. Jose. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this reminds me of Skeptic Party Room, Anne is our 
bartender and also knows everything there is to know about hangovers. Yes. She's really smart. She did a panel on this last year. Yeah. So you should ask her questions because she's super cool. Yeah, she does an amazing like whole performance about alcohols and the chemistry of it, and it's it's absolutely not to be missed. So again, room two two seven. Uh, we had a, a really lively conversation on the Skeptic back channel. Uh, that I'm not sure if it ever made it to air, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, it was about the guy who made news by talking about uh, avoiding hangovers by eating yeast before he goes out drinking. Julia, do you want to comment on that and whether or not that is pseudoscience? So that, um, the, the idea is that if you eat yeast beforehand, the yeast will metabolize the alcohol as you are um, drinking and you will have less of a hangover. I don't have any friends who have tried that and um, or not. <laughs> Would I do it? Yes. <laughs> I, I have to say that eating a lot of yeast, in my experience, um, really just kind of gives you a stomach ache. Um, if you're really drinking a lot of, like, um, for example, unfiltered beer, um, if, you, if you go to Oktoberfest, for example, and drink a lot of, like, Hefeweizen, which is an unfiltered beer, uh, you'll get really gassy. Um, it's really hard to consume like a, a fair amount of yeast, and you will get a hangover um, no matter what. So, <laughs> um, I did have a friend who ate like nothing but yogurt for two days and kombucha because I live in Madison, and that's the kind of thing that happens. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I'm very sick. <laughs> I don't recommend having too much like yeast in your diet before you start drinking. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I have to say, if anybody has tried this, I would love to get an email from you on, on the practice. You also don't want to do it before your apology appointment. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, there's a pseudoscience that I didn't address. It's very pertinent to the time period right now. Right now is Ramadan, the Muslim month of fasting. And a lot of Muslims like to talk about the health benefits of fasting and how it's so great for you. I recently came across statistics about the Muslim world and basically car accidents and children who are born underweight and all that stuff highly correlated to Ramadan. And the fasting that they cite, the research that they cite that fasting is good for you, is basically not eating for a while, but also drinking water, which Muslim fasting involves also dehydrating yourself. So, uh, yeah, don't, don't let that fool you either. <laughs> you know, and that was another uh, myth that came up, but I don't know if I ever made it public, but, um, oh no, I think I saw you talking about this on Facebook, yeah. and it was uh, about women who menstruate. Uh, someone said that they get lucky because they, if they're menstruating, they don't have to fast. They, they, they can't fast, according to Muslim practice. It's not that you get to decide, oh, I'm on the rag, I don't have to fast. Even if you starve and dehydrate yourself, your fast doesn't count in the eyes of God and you have to make it up later anyway. I used to fucking hate it because I, I get hungry on my period, so I want to eat, but then everyone would know I was bleeding out of my vagina. So I would like go to the bathroom and hide so no Muslims on campus would see me. It was the worst and I hate it. I just want to go back in time and hug baby. She, she would have judged you very harshly. Like, it's all right, baby, bring it in, bring it in. Uh, I saw another hand. Uh, okay. Um, I, I've heard talk of quantum theory. Uh, good, good start. Good start. <laughs> Does anyone on the panel know anything about metaphysics? Metaphysics. Oh God. Sure. Wait. What about it? Well, you all right, like Debbie, physics that's metaphysics or philosophy that's metaphysics? <laughs> Well, I, it's not something that I'm entirely familiar with myself. Yeah. So. Nobody knows how to answer that question. Right, Nobody the, <laughs> the answer is quantum. <laughs> As a philosophy major, for once I'm qualified by being a philosophy major. There's, there's two things that people refer to when they talk about metaphysics. One is the actual legit philosophical branch where we talk about existence, blah, blah, blah. And the other is what bullshit woo-woo people talk about. Anything that they can't, you know, quantify or actually describe with facts. Quantify. Quantify. They quantify it instead of quantify it. Um, yeah, no, I unfortunately, being poly, there's a lot of woo people. And I dated one who was really into metaphysics for a while. And by metaphysics, he meant my poor little spurt TVs. I think what um, you're saying is metaphysics either is or it isn't. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was just going to make a comment about this, this whole eating yeast to prevent a hangover idea. 
And if that actually did work, wouldn't it just prevent you from getting drunk? It would. Because it would metabolize the alcohol before going into your bloodstream anyway, because the yeast is not in your bloodstream. In theory, yes. So the problem is, the problem is like catching up. Don't do that. very absorbent and catching like all of the alcohol that goes into your body like right as it is in your mouth like it, it, it might be fun to drink with just like a mouthful of live yeast culture on <laughs> until someone catches you and takes you to the hospital for rabies I think, <laughs> I think it would be a, a, an ill-conceived experiment because there's really just no way to prevent all the alcohol in theory yes it would slow you down from getting drunk um, the best way to avoid a hangover is to, of course, be hydrated and eating plenty of food and have you know, slow down the metabolism of the alcohol in your body. And here's a thought, maybe you don't drink the entire bottle, you know. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm sorry, get off. I'll say this, drink the whole bottle, but then don't come to me in the wine store and ask for sulfite-free wine, because sulfites ain't your problem. <laughs>
yeah, so so the yeast thing. Um, I'm stuck on this because I, I know what happens when yeast is an alcohol, it dies, because that's when you know you're done brewing. Um, so if you wanted to, to metabolize the alcohol, what you'd want to do is swallow a vinegar mother, which is like a giant loogie. <laughs> and then you have a body full of I vinegar. think you just invented the new suicide. <laughs> Made from it's really creepy. Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a big, gross pancake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, she said it was like a booger, and now you're saying it's a pancake, so I'm asking. It's a booger pancake. pancake. <laughs> <laughs> that was the question. What a dry I vote for that one. <laughs> Speaking of, we have about three minutes left, which should be enough time to pull the. Do we have another? Uh, God damn it, Beth. What the fuck do you want? <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 